Welcome. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about something that's really important, I think, for all architecture students, and that's building a personal reference library. Specifically, what we're going to talk about today is adding a collection of drawing sets to that library. You probably don't need any help when it comes to adding some graphics or some presentation images. Those are pretty easy to find. They're the, the part of architecture that we tend to be kind of drawn to anyway. So we're pretty likely to you know, come across some favorite sites uh, where we can gather some of those resources, presentation images, presentation drawings, renderings, diagrams, animations, whatever that might be. Uh, they're all over the internet, on social media, on Instagram, on Pinterest. And then of course, we can go directly to the actual websites for the architects find them there. Um, and then there's really good resources like, for example, Arc Daily. Uh, if needed, I can do a video about that and kind of address some of those good resources. But like I said, you probably have a pretty good feel for what your favorites are already. The more difficult part of adding to your personal reference library is most likely going to be tracking down those drawing sets. And I would say that that really is the more important part of your reference library because it represents the more substantial part of what gets done uh, in an architecture office. So having some good reference drawing sets is a really, really important thing to add. And I'm gonna show you how you can track down some of that stuff today. Okay, to start off, uh, we're gonna to go to a very high profile building, uh, one that you're probably all familiar with. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to track down drawing sets for three different buildings. This will definitely be the easiest of the set. Uh, the other two that I show you are gonna be a little bit more complex and require a little bit more digging. Uh, but this one um, is again, one that you're probably all familiar with is one that uh, you can actually track down some drawing sets for really quite easily. And uh, of course, this is a building that was finished just a few years ago, uh, a building by Norman Foster and Partners, uh, very high profile building, lots of attention on this one, uh, lots of places to go to get images and you know animations and uh, movies that show drone flights and all sorts of similar things. So that's the easy part, but uh, it's a little bit more complex to track down some drawing sets. The key to this is to think about the municipality. This happens to be located in Cupertino, California. And in the interest of being transparent, uh, municipalities in the United States like to share the work that they do. And fortunately for us, that means that they want to show the drawings that they're reviewing. And that was certainly the case with this building. So as I said, the key to this is to find the municipal website. Uh, and in this case, we're gonna be going to the city of Cupertino. And my Google search here initially to get this going was just Cupertino Planning Department. And I can then go right to the first hit and it takes me to the city of Cupertino website. And uh, that happened to take me kind of a little further into the website, luckily. And you can see here in the address in the URL that it's taken me within these different departments. And then once I get to this point, I can just click on major projects. And all I have to do in this case is just scroll down a little bit so I can see Apple Park. I'll click on that and then I'm on the web page here that displays all the relevant information for this huge, high profile, fantastic project. And fortunately enough, down towards the bottom, uh, there are links to the actual drawings that were submitted for review by the city of Cupertino. And uh, I'll just take one of the top hits here and just click on Apple's updated proposal documents, September 2013. And I'll just click on the, let's say floor plans part two and it just goes right into the PDF format. And you can see here that these are actual submitted drawings. I get 51 pages worth, lots of really good detail. You can see that there are some sort of presentation images mixed in with this, but uh, as I make, make my way down, you can see that there's a little bit more sort of site plan type, you know, working drawing uh, documents here later in the set. And then I would just click here on the download link. And uh, then I've got myself that really good resource here for my personal reference library. And I'll just uh, maybe go to a set here in Acrobat and show you just how, detail, uh, how detailed this information is. And this is another set that I downloaded here showing some floor plans. This one happens to be 15 pages in length, but you can see as I scroll through this that I get lots of good information. Uh, in this situation, it happens to be vector-based. So I get some really nice, sharp detail here. Uh, I can zoom in and see lots of good resolution, lots of good information. Uh, that won't always be the case, as you'll see in some of the later sets here. We don't always get vector information. It just depends what the municipality does with the information. Uh, once they want to make it public uh, and uh, allow people to view it. So for the next one, we're going to go again, just in another municipality in the United States, to a building that's a little bit less high profile. And this maybe mimics the process that you might, uh, you might be more likely to use where you spot a building, you're really interested in it and then you want to track down some information for it. 
So I'm going to jump up the coast here a little bit to Portland. And we're going to look at a building that uh, I noticed on Arc Daily when I was just doing some uh, research on multi-use residential buildings. And I happened to come across some information, but very little on this building here that you see depicted as I orbit around in Google Earth. So I learned the address and then I went through a similar sort of process on the Portland municipal site to try to figure out how I could track down some drawings for it. And my initial search, um, and there again, that's the information that I came across initially in Arc Daily. So that was the starting point of it, but there was nothing more than this. Uh, really just that one image to go by, uh, which led me to doing a bit of a Google Street View. So having confirmed that this was an interesting building, then I decided to kind of track down some information for it on the Portland Municipal site. It started off with a similar sort of search. Uh, I just typed in Portland permit maps this time. So the search terms might vary um, with Cupertino planning department works and I find that that works most of the time, but you might have to vary that search a little bit. And in this case, I looked for a permit map. I clicked on the top hit, which was the advanced Portland maps. It took me to this window here to the site. Um, and I found that I didn't need the advanced search. So I actually just modified the URL a little bit here and just went to directly uh, directly to portlandmaps.com. And this was one of the easier sites to navigate. It showed me the map, and then I was able to just kind of zoom in on that building that I had been looking at on Arc Daily, which happens to be located here. Uh, I found the address, which happened to be this building here, number 321 on Northeast Couch Street. But uh, with this particular web page, I didn't even actually need that. Uh, nice thing about portlandmaps.com is I can just click directly on the little representation of the building. And then I get this, this display of information over here on the right. So this is where you have to just kind of dig around a little bit. This won't be fairly, uh, won't be intuitive. It won't be as obvious as it was on the Cupertino site. But if you just kind of look for things like, for example, permits, uh, you'll be able to get a little bit closer to the display of those actual drawing sets. So I looked under permits and zoning, and then I just clicked here on permits. And then what I saw was a display of all the available sort of documents relating to permits. And I just stuck with this top section here, permits. And I noticed that there were 145 documents. And this is where you have to really do a little bit of research. And uh, there won't be a quick shortcut way to do this. Uh, this is going to be the most sort of, uh, I guess, tedious part of the process. But it yields good fruit when you're done. So what I decided to do next is I decided to click on that 145 and it expanded so I could see everything. And then I decided to use my Google Chrome search to just refine the search a little bit. So I typed in just control F and then I used the search term here, new construction to kind of sort through those 145 different documents. It uh, yielded 37 hits. And then after having looked through most of those, and I won't do this here, of course, I'll just kind of shortcut to where I found the information that I was looking for. Um, on the 23rd link, so I just used this uh, little kind of click button here just to advance through the searches. And as I said, on number 23, I found this particular permit and I clicked on the link over here on the left and it took me to a display here of all the information relevant to that specific application. And then the next step was to just look down here in the actual documents section. And then I just used the scroll bar and looked at the size of the files. And this is uh, a good indication here that I've got some drawing uh, information, a drawing set. Um, and that's the size of the file. You can see here that it displays something in the neighborhood of about 640 megabytes. Now, unlike the last example that we saw with Cupertino, uh, in this case, what Portland does is they scan the documents. Uh, not always, but for a lot of the documents, there's just a scanning process. So they're actually taking pictures, scanning, and then they upload that information. So um, that being the case, you're likely to see some very large files for the actual drawings. These other documents might just be letters or certificates. Uh, if you want to get into the drawings, you tend to have to look for something a little bit larger. So the process with Portland is a little bit different than, than uh, Cupertino or the last example that we'll see after this, um, in that you have to do a little bit of a login. You have to create an account. So after clicking on that information, you'll see a window that displays um, an opportunity to create an account. And then once that account is created, then you can just click on a waiver form um, and just include some basic initials, and then it will permit you to do a download. So having selected that particular uh, drawing submission and gone through the login process, then I was able to actually do the download. And I'll just show you what the end result was here by just looking in Acrobat. 
And once again, I'll just kind of make the point here that uh, the result was a rasterized scan set of drawings. Uh, this particular set happens to be 42 pages long. And as I use Acrobat to kind of scroll through, you'll see that I have not just the typical sorts of presentation images and drawings and graphics that you'd see on some of the other uh, internet resources, but I actually get a representation here of the submitted drawings. So a tremendous resource, lots of good information in here, a really good way to just kind of get a feel for how things look uh, on the actual drawing sets and also, you know, gain some familiarity with some of the graphic standards that these uh, firms might be using. So that was the process, uh, again, as I said, um, for Portland that required a little bit more research. I'm going to show you one more, and this is for another kind of similar high profile building. And I'll just uh, jump to a browser window here to show you the building that I'm going to be trying to track down next. This is the Bullet Center in Seattle. Very high profile building, a fantastic example of a sustainable building. Uh, as you can see here, the claim that they made at the time that this building was occupied, that it was the, it was the greenest commercial building in the world. Uh, Living Building Challenge certified. And uh, again, just a really good uh, sort of high profile example um, of a building that was chasing a lot of sustainability initiatives. Certainly something that uh, would be good to have in your personal reference library. So the process was similar for the Bullet Center, um, but I'll show you some variations here. Uh, there's no need for a login with this particular example, so that part will be a little bit easier. Uh, my initial Google search for Seattle Planning Department brought me to this uh, web page here where I could see uh, sort of a mapped representation um, of all the properties in Seattle. That worked fairly well for Portland, um, but in this case, when I clicked on the link here for the address of the building, which was 1501 East Madison Street, it only showed me some of the more recent documents. So when I clicked, it brought up this little link and I expanded project records and documents. And again, like I said, uh, there was an opportunity to click on this link to bring up some of the documents, uh, some of the PDFs and drawings and such, but it was only um, a, a limited record. It was only uh, you know, a list of sort of recent um, drawings for this particular property. So it was actually more productive in that case to Google Seattle Planning Department. And then I just took the, this, in this case, it was the seventh link down. And this takes me to the Seattle Department, uh, as it says there, of construction and inspections. So I don't get the luxury of a nice sort of easy, easy sort of visual reference map in this case, but I'll be able to find the information that I want regardless. So having found that page, I then went down to permits. And after having clicked on permits over on the right side, again, this was the initial temptation as I wanted to just use the map, but I found it wasn't quite the, the good resource that this was. So I clicked on search permit and property records, and then it brought me to this screen where I could just type in the address. And here's where I typed in 1501 East Madison Street. And you can see it already jumped to that one. So then I just clicked go. And then you'll see on the next page, a display of all the available viewable permits related to this address. And that's lagging a little bit, but it'll get there. Uh, and initially what we're going to see is a very, very long, long list here, hundreds of different available permits. So just to kind of repeat what was said about the last example in Portland, uh, I'm looking for a file in this case that's fairly large. It's going to be a visual file. Um, so luckily on this website, I have the ability to sort by size. So if I just click there, initially it'll show me the small ones. If I click it again a second time, you'll see that it displays the larger files. And in this case, uh, I clicked on kind of the three top three or four here that displayed fairly, you know, significant size. Uh, and it end up, ended up being, in this case, the approved plan set that had the most information as far as sort of a building permit or working drawing uh, level of detail. So having clicked on that, and I'll just go to Acrobat and show you the downloaded result, I was able to find this 38-page document. Once again, scanned like the Portland example. It won't always be that way. Sometimes you'll get uh, lucky and find an actual vector-based PDF. But you can see here that I've got lots of good information. And this is the actual set of drawings that was reviewed by the municipal organization. So that's the process. Um, key search terms like planning department or permit map are going to help you. But I've found in the exper experiments that I've done uh, for cities all over the United States that I've been able to find some pretty good reference material. Uh, some cities are more difficult than others. They've got more information that they've posted so that there's maybe more to wade through. But if you repeat that process, I think you'll find that there's a lot of really good information out there 
certainly good stuff to add to your personal reference library.